Okay, so let's start this topic called quadratics. Y equals x squared is a famous graph. It curves like this, and it's called the parabola. The first point is 0, 0. When you substitute 0 into here, 0 squared is the y value. So you get 0, 0. We can even create a table of values. x y equals x squared. So when we substitute 0 here, y is 0. Now what about 1? 1 squared is 1. It's going to be here, 1 comma 1. And what about 2? 2 squared is 4. So this would be 2 comma 4. Now can you guess the y value when it's 3? It's 3 squared, which is 9. So this graph grows up and up and up. And the domain is x belongs to real numbers, all real numbers. And the range is y is greater than or equals to 0. So including the endpoint here, the graph keeps on growing up. You could also write y belongs, including 0, all square bracket means including but not including infinity. So this is positive infinity. The, the rounded bracket means not including that endpoint because there is no endpoint for infinity. It's only an idea. It's not an actual number. The vertex is 0, 0 here. The equation of the line is symmetry. So visualize a line going up and down, cutting through the middle, and we'll call this x equals 0. Do not mix up your x's and y's. x equals 0 is a vertical line. y equals 0 would be a flat line with a slope of 0. OK, so let's focus on this new graph, y equals x squared. This is your base function, minus 9. Minus 9 means down 9 units. If this was a plus 9, it would mean shifted up 9 units. So let's draw this. We're simply going to take this center position and go down 9 units. This is negative 9. So this is our starting point. We're going to curve a graph all the way up like this, and it keeps on growing. Sketch and label three points. So this point over here would be 0, comma, negative 9. And if you want to plug in 3 here, this is positive 3. 3 comma 0 would be a point because try plugging in 3 into the x value here. 3 squared would be 9. 9 minus 9 would give us a y value. f of x is your y value of 0. Similarly, negative 3 comma 0 would have the same result. Let's try plugging in one more point over here for the sake of practice. Let's try plugging in 1. When you plug in 1 squared, 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 9 is negative 8. So we're still underneath the x-axis. And so the range we can see visually is greater than or equals to this endpoint here. So y is greater than or equals to negative 9, including that endpoint. Whenever there's a curve, we include that as an endpoint. Evaluate f of negative 2. So we're substituting negative 2 into the x value here, and negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 9 is negative 5. What are the intercepts? So when we get the question, what are the intercepts, we're asking two questions. What are the x-intercepts, and what are the y-intercepts, or intercept? So let's try the y-intercept first. To find the intercepts, you set the opposite of y, which is x, equals 0. So when x equals 0, y is equal to x squared minus 9. y is equal to 0 squared minus 9. So y is negative 9. And you can see it's true right here. So the y-intercept is a number, negative 9, which implies the point 0, comma, negative 9. What about the x-intercepts? We're going to set 
y equals 0. So when 0, the y value, is equal to x squared minus 9, we can factor. Difference of squares. Something times something is 0. What could x be? You can see that when you make it the opposite of this number, we have 0. When x is negative 3, or x equals 3, so when x is 3 here, 3 minus 3 is 0, 0 times anything is 0, we find the x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts are plus minus 3 over here and here. And intercepts imply points. And now it's your turn.